Hello there, Hatters. Welcome to the OK Football Show Opposition Preview with me, Philip Macbeth Seath. I have not stopped smiling since Saturday. It's been a lovely return to work, working in Hemel Hempstead with a bunch of Watford fans. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. It is just a real shame that we don't get to ruminate in this win for a little bit longer. Um, today, I'll be previewing our next match, which is against Sunderland at home, table-topping Sunderland at home. Uh, Paddy from the Roker Report will be joining me this evening as he'll reflect on their 1-0 win away to Hull on Sunday afternoon. We've got an extra 24 hours rest that Sunderland haven't been able to take advantage of. And I think that, that could be really important for us because, let's face it, our defence was decimated by the win on Saturday. Ultimately, we were superb to a man, but the loss of Burke was big. Um, and we continue to struggle with filling those three defensive positions um, in that back three of ours. But ultimately, it was just the tonic, wasn't it? The way that we played man to man was absolutely superb. There were some standout performers, of course. I thought that Carlton Morris well deserved his man of the match, even though he only managed about 65 minutes. But he was absolutely Superb. He was the Carlton Morris of old, the Carlton Morris that we know can absolutely tear up this league. I thought that there were wonderful performances from the likes of Mark McGuinness. I thought that Alfie Doughty was absolutely exceptional, especially when he had to step into that left centre-back position. Uh, the way that he was able to read the play was absolutely superb. I thought that Adebayo had a great game trying to tie things together and that goal is definitely coming. I can feel it in my bones. It's definitely coming for Elijah. So we're going to go into this game with a hell of a lot of confidence and it's much needed as well because that was the first real proper 90 minute performance that Luton Town have given this season. So like I said we're welcoming Sunderland who are top of the league sitting on 22 points. The last time they played us it was joyous. The atmosphere was almost as good as that Watford one at the weekend. Potentially some might even say better but um, like I say let's listen to what um, Paddy had to say from the Roker Report, I'm speaking to him later on this evening and uh, I hope that you enjoy it. So everyone, as promised, here's Paddy from the Roker Report. Paddy, thank you so much for joining me this evening. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you. I asked you to come in your kit and you haven't disappointed, so thank you very <laughs> much. Um, Paddy, just before we start, um, I always like to, to make sure that everyone gets the opportunity to share their social media. So Paddy, could you just remind the listeners of, uh, of who you are and where you come from and where they can give you a follow? Yeah, so um, my name's uh, Paddy Hollis. Uh, I'm, I, in terms of Sunderland, I write for um, the Roker Report. We're a fanzine and, and a podcast, so that's where we do a lot of the kind of um, pre and post match stuff there. Um, my um, my Twitter handle is um, at Paddy Hollis123. Um, and basically, I use it for a lot of the stuff I put on there is to do with Sunderland and a lot of like the sort of it's the Roker Report things what I share on there so yeah that's if people follow that's usually what they'll say it's usually football or cricket okay. so I'm not <laughs> there's, there's, not, there's not, that much, uh, not much else to say about that but uh, yeah no it's um, it's, it's a good uh, good sort of fanzine and, and podcast to be part of so it's, it's all good yeah lovely thank you very much for that Paddy I appreciate that so moving forward to Sunderland so um this week, uh, you're off the back of, a, of another win, like sitting pretty on 22 points at the top of the league and a, a hard-fought 1-0 away win at Hull. Um, I, I, I was looking at the at the lineup um the other day and, and seeing that that centre two of, of 09 and Mepham at the back. And it, it, on the BBC Sport website, at least, it adds you as a 4-3-3. Is that what you've been playing so far this season? Yeah, it is really. I mean, we there was talk in pre season about um our new manager um Regis Labrie opting for a five at the back. Um but we've we've not done that and it's not something you know, we have had the back four's been there throughout the, the season. But yeah, it is pretty much a four three three. Um our midfield's relatively settled, um and yeah, we kinda of play the the sort of traditional kind of front three of we basically have three forwards. You've got the two out and out wingers, and then the one centre forward. Um, and yeah, there's not really been too many times we've changed that up this season. So I'll be surprised if that formation does change at Luton uh, because we haven't changed it for anyone so far this season. And I don't see why it would change anytime soon, yeah. to be honest. 
Well, lucky you. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's been yeah. really difficult for it's been really difficult for us to put out the same side um, for, from a Luton mm. Town's point of view, and we, we suffered more injuries at the weekend at the back. So um, I, I was speaking to your colleague at the Roker Report and saying about how it's going to be difficult for us to play a back back three um tomorrow so it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting one but going back to yourselves sorry i do do that i do occasionally just go off on one about luton town sorry paddy That's but fine. um <laughs> I, i've noticed that you've got a, a new striker and he seems to be tearing it up at the minute he scored three and four i think it is it's wilson Is it or um and i see that he's yeah. like a, he's he's played at a decent level for like the france sort of under 21s he's played with saliba and and the like so uh what's what's he like what have we got to look forward to at kenilworth road tomorrow watching him yeah, I mean he's he's kind of he's perfect for the way we play really, um, and you know he's he's very much hit the ground running. Um, he had a couple of substitute starts, um, substitute appearances when he first came in uh, because we had our uh, we start the season with Elisa Mayenda, who um, yeah. he's almost fully fit, but he's he's not available tomorrow. Um, but I mean he's still, he's great really. I mean he's got the we didn't realize he had a turn of pace, and then he he did that at Hull where. You sort of watching him. You kind of. I was watching it on TV, and he kind of comes out of nowhere, mm. and he just kind of. You know, he just. He gets the ball, and he, you know, he beats the last defender, and he's through. So, we're still kind of learning about him, and we know that through social media, like he, you know, he loves being here. He's, he's loved his time here so far, um, but he's one of these where he's a. He's a proper. He finishes goals like a proper striker, mm-hmm. and I mean that in the sense that the first two goals he scored were very much. He's kind of drifted in, almost unaware. You know, the defenders haven't picked him up, and he's kind of just been there, right place at the right time. The goal at Hull was very different because it was it was a counter attack, and it was a game where we were kind of getting bogged down a bit because Hull were sort of you know threatening to have us on the ropes. Um, but no, he's he's always he's brilliant. He's, he's an all round centre forward. I mean, he's you know we, to bring in someone obviously of his calibre, and you know we yeah. we knew. He was going to be good, but you know, there's always the question of you know, will he be able to hit the ground running in the championship? You know, it's a yeah. A lot of people say it's the hardest league in the world, and I tend to agree sometimes because it yeah. is just it's brutal more than anything. So no, he's he's hit the ground running, and um, he'll be leading the line tomorrow. And yeah, I mean, he's 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 brilliant all round player. To be honest, he's he's just what we needed really. Yeah, because he was at Zenit, wasn't he? Is that right? Is he was at was he at Zenit St Petersburg, which is uh, it's quite yes. some trajectory, isn't it? To 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 sort of uh, be a French French under twenty ones international, be over at Zenit St Petersburg, and then end up with yourselves. It's uh, I don't, yeah, so I don't think he was directly on... from there, was he? But no, no, no. He's um he's on loan at the minute, and I think it's one of these where we have like an option to to buy, right? Which is quite nice because obviously we've been burned in the past when loan players. Are absolutely outstanding, and it's like they're not going to stay. <laughs> There's no yeah. way we're going to be able to get them. Obviously, best example is Ahmad. I mean, yeah. it, you know, we were just kind of counting down the days for when Ahmad left because it's like he's not going to come back to the championship after the season. He's just had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those horrible things, isn't it? They always say, "Don't fall in love with a lone player." Um, I think we, the the biggest example we had as Luton fans was uh, Keane and Dewsbury Hall. Um, who's yeah. now at Chelsea, and you just knew he was levels above. And and it's one of those ones. Last time we played you, it was one of those ones where Ahmad. Was you could just tell, like I, I'm, and yeah. for you guys, I apologise for this barbed comment, but like you guys must have loved him, but like he was a proper little wind up merchant. <laughs> so oh, he's one yeah. of those ones where if he's playing for your own, you're absolutely fine with it, but if he's not on your own, you'd be like, oh, little shit. Yeah. <laughs> so he, but, he so, really but, is, yeah, yeah, but no, absolutely <laughs> talented player. But speaking of talented players, um, one of the one of the biggest losses that you had in the summer was was Jack Clark, and you had arguably your best one of your best wingers sort of poached by Ipswich just like we lost Chidozi Ogbene from, from Luton. But you've got Mundell, and I, I'm not necessarily saying he's got the same output as Jack Clark, but he's certainly filled those boots to a decent degree, hasn't he? Would, is it, he's He's been decent. It, it, yeah, he's been very good. Um, also we signed him in the January, um, and everyone kind of said, oh, he's the Jack Clark replacement. We didn't see too much of him, because obviously Jack Clark, we still had... You know, we still had Clark and we still yeah. had him, have him playing as much as possible with him being our best player. But when it, it was a tough one because he kind of got sort of pushed in. Obviously, he'll have been ready for it, but from, from our perspective as fans, it was a case of he's gone straight in left wing position because Clark's leaving and, you know, Mundell's our sort of next senior left winger. Um, and he's, he's been brilliant. 
I think I don't think anyone could have really expected him to to start so well. Um, but I think a lot of it is to do with a different way of setting up. Um, we've got a our new head coach. He he tends to. It seems that under him, the the wingers kind of try and they try and be a bit less one dimensional. Where I, I thought Jack Clark is brilliant. I thought he's fantastic. But one thing about Clark is he was very predictable. Like you just knew he'd be on the left hand side. You just know he'd want to cut inside and yeah. either play the ball across the box or get a shot in. Mm. Whereas in, in Mundo, you know, obviously he's still a few years behind Clark in terms of experience and development, but he cuts inside and outside and he's scored goals and got this, got assists by doing both. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it was, it was like, it was perfect progression really, you know, that we, we saw Clark and everyone was thinking, oh, we need to replace him, we need to replace him. And obviously our manager's gone, no, we don't. Yeah. We, we've, got, we've already got his replacement. Yeah. Um, and that, that's how it's panned out really. And, yeah, I mean, I think he got a bit frustrated um, on Sunday. Um, I think that was probably one of his, not even worst games, but he was just, we weren't getting the ball to him as much. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's a case of, it happens with forwards. You know, if you don't give the ball to the forwards, they can't do anything with it. Of course. Um, yeah. So, yeah, in that sense, you know, it wasn't his best game. But, I mean, he's he's a brilliant player and he's, he's another really good find by a club who, you know, we have got a decent track record of finding some, some gems, which makes a change. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's one of those ones where I, I, I think he had a, two, I think it was two games in a row, or at least two in a, a short space of time, where he was on the left wing and he's cut inside um, and just planted one across the face of the goal into the bottom corner, and you, you kind of think, God, yeah, Jack, Jack, who, you know, he's 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 he's, he's been fantastic. Looking from mm. sort of a distance, he looks like he's a, he's a real player. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how he does at Kenilworth Road. Obviously, the the, the pitch is is tight, the whole ground is tight. So it'll be interesting to see if he if he if he shrinks or if he if he sort of steps up, um, you know, and 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 laughs in the face of the opposition fans in a way because that'll be the challenge that's set for him. But um, yeah, I mean, the, uh, there's other players as well that I was going to pick out for you, Paddy, as well. And 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 tell me if I'm wrong, but you've obviously got some some exceptional talent in in your squad and one that stood out for me is is always Roberts I like I really like him I think that he's just one of those players that he's just he's just clever and he's just fast and sharp and a little bit tricky um so will he be starting tomorrow alongside I'm guessing Bellingham will play as well um in in one of those middle three and moving forwards yeah yeah Roberts um again I'll be surprised I mean, I'm looking at, I've got our starting lineup from the whole game. And to be honest, there's possibly one change we might make, but I think it'll be pretty much the same team. And yeah. the front, yeah, the front three, exactly the same. So we'll have Roberts on the right-hand side. But Roberts, he's a, he's a frustrating player because we all know he's got the talent and the ability because yeah. he's shown it numerous times for, for Sunderland and obviously elsewhere. But he's one of these players where he, he does need the support. And I think he... This this season more than last season, you know, he's I think he's already sort of got more goals and assists than he did in the entirety of last season because we've got the 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 right back behind him, Trey Hume. He's been able to get forward more, but also he's got Chris Riggin behind him. Yeah, and I think it, he's been one of the reasons why he was so good in our first season in the championship was because he had Ahmad with him, and them two were just I mean when they, when they were on the same wavelength, I mean they were unstoppable. And I think that's kind of what he's been missing. He's he's a brilliant player in his own right, but if he has other quality players around him, which you know I like to think he does now, that's kind of why we're starting to get towards seeing the best of, of yeah. uh, Patrick Roberts. Because, like I said before, we know he's class. He yeah. just can be very frustrating. Where he'll he could beat two or three players, and then instead of having a shot, he'll. Cut the ball back and there's no one there, sort of thing, because he's yeah. kind of he's almost he's almost done too much. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, he's he's our starting right winger. You know, we know he's got the quality. So yeah, yeah he, he is good to watch because you just you know that he's capable of doing something brilliant, and that's what that's what kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat with Robert. Yeah, it's one of those ones where you see you see someone that's got clever footwork like him, and even as an opposing fan, you kind of go, "Oh yeah, he's got a bit about him," you know. So that's that's one of the reasons why I picked him out, to be honest with you, because he's just one of those ones where you kind of, as an opponent, you kind of think, Ugh, "Here he comes." Yeah. <laughs> so, sort of thing. So, uh, who's going to get booked first? I'll, I'll put whoever's marking him. But I think so. Uh, <laughs> but I was just going to give a brief nod as well, and I know that he's only, I think he's only made his first appearance, but there's a there is a little bit of a link with us as well that um, you've got a former Hatter. Uh, with you at the moment with Aaron Connolly. Um, he didn't really get a massive go at um, 
at, at cement in a place with us. Um, uh, he was very much younger than he is now, but that's an exciting one to have off the bench as well. Like especially at championship level, like he's he's a good player. Um, it'll be interesting yeah. to see what you guys think of him moving forwards. Yeah, I mean, it was um, it was a bit out of the blue for us because it's the first time in a while where I think we've kind of utilised the uh, the free agent market. I mean, we haven't done it in a long time. Mm. And I know there's been previous windows where we haven't signed a striker or as many strikers as our fans would want. And we've said, why don't we look who's, who's a free agent? The problem is with the free agent market is there's usually a reason why those players yeah. don't have a club and it's because they're, you know, injury record or, you know, they have like silly sort of wage demands, things like that. But in Connolly, I mean, as soon as we got linked, I was thinking that seems like a, it seems like no risk. I mean, we know fairly recently he was scoring goals in the Premier League. You know, it, it's kind of, we know he's had some, his battles off the field, you know, he's come out and, you know, you've got to admire his bravery to come out and say, you know, all these things in the, the kind of the, the headspace he was in, but I feel like he's in quite a good place at Sunderland because we have in the last couple of seasons we do we have a bit of a track record of like trying to not so much like rehabilitate players, but I guess at the same time we do. Yeah, we, we've done a few players, not necessarily you know like in as serious a kind of issues as what Aaron Connolly's had, but players who have the potential and just just need kind of putting on the right path again. Mm-hmm. Um, so as soon as we've got them, I was thinking, yeah, this seems really exciting. Yeah. And as he said, you know, as a, an option to come off the, the bench, I mean, before the whole game, um, our head coach basically said, yeah, he's going to get 15, 20 minutes at the end of the whole game. Yeah. And he came on and, you know, he didn't he didn't get too much of the ball in the final third, but, you know, he held the ball well. He, he, he put the pressure on sort of tiring defenders. And really, at that point in the game, when you're winning away from home, He's the perfect sort of player yeah. to have. So, yeah, yeah I'm I'm excited. Um, I think it's a it's a good signing. Um, I think he's got he's got a lot to prove. Um, he knows that he's coming to a club where, when all the strikers are fit, he's he might be at first sort of third in the pecking order behind sort of Isidore and Mayenda. But I mean, to have those three options as centre forwards, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's brilliant, really. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can't say fairer than that, can you? It's one of those ones where that's what gets you up. It's the, it's the goals, isn't it? So, um, exactly, and, and like yeah. I say, he's one of those ones where he's such a willing runner and he's such a, and I mean this as a compliment, he's a, he's a ratty little little fella that will put in a little ankle bite just to sort of um, try yeah. and let you know he's there straight off the bat. So um, I think it's a fantastic, and it's you know what it's like. As soon as a player goes back to their their old club, they tend to try and prove a point. So I'm, I'm really quite hopeful that he's quiet tomorrow. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> but um, Paddy, moving forwards, I, I think I've spoke to you uh, offline before and um, we have a thing called the Sluga Six Predictor League uh, at the OK Football Show. Um, so it's a bit yeah. of a rip off, but it's good fun. Um, and um, what we do is we try to get the opposition podcast opponents to to basically predict the scores um, of the week and coming up. Just for those that are listening, uh, it is currently 7-18 and the Leeds game hasn't kicked off yet, which is one of those ones that Paddy is going to be predicting. Um, but the, the Sluga 6, what we do is the, the opposition podcast uh, are all working together um, with a view to winning a £50 donation to Luton's Food Bank. Um, so what we'll do is we'll post the scores up on our social media and you're basically playing against myself, the show host, Ollie Kay, our producer, Matt, and Mark. So I've got six scores here that I'm okay. going to ask you for. First one, um, and you can elaborate on this one, Paddy, because I don't feel like I've properly spoken to you about this yet, but it is the it is the Luton versus Sunderland game. So we give double points, but how do you feel like the game's going to go um, tomorrow night? To be honest, I, before, you know, we had obviously back-to-back away games in about four days. Before the whole game kicked off, I was kind of thinking if we get four points in then two games, I'll be I'll be delighted. Yeah. And to be honest, the the trip to Luton, I know notice you guys have got injury issues and things like that, but it's something about going to Luton where we just we've never we've never really sort of enjoyed it. I think we've always tended to to struggle, especially in the you know in the, the last couple of visits there. So I think it's gonna be a draw. So I, I'm I'm gonna go for a draw for Luton Sunderland and I think one one. Um, I think we've, I think we've actually scored in every game this season, um, and I think we'll continue that because we just look so free flowing at times. But yeah, it seems like the sort of game where you know we have kept a lot of clean sheets. But if we were going to concede anywhere, I think it probably would be at Luton. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's me. Um, me logic behind it. Uh, no, the one-one draw for, for us <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> it's interesting because I um, Matt from the Roker Report contacted me and he asked me to, to fill in a few questions um, for his pre-match report, and I said exactly the same scoreline. I said one. <laughs> um, I said that you're absolutely flying. I said we're we're sort of decimated at the back by injury, but I would like to think that we're sort of on a bit of a crest of a mini wave after our we beating our, our local rivals in the derby at the weekend and being yeah. at home you'd like to think that we'd get it get something so yeah one all seems like a popular one so um but moving on to the next game I've got uh, Blackburn versus West Brom how are you seeing that one Paddy? So I think I know West Brom have started well um but for me I think Blackburn at home I mean I think they've possibly won every home game so far this season they've definitely not lost at home doing well um, yeah. and yeah I, I think they led to that one out I think it'll be 1-0 to Blackburn yeah. I think West Brom have shown at times this season that some of the I mean I've not watched some loads but the times I've seen them it, they are quite at risk of just running out of ideas mm. I know I watched the highlights against Middlesbrough and you know Middlesbrough were brilliant but West Brom just they just seem to run out of ideas and yeah I think that's the sort of game where they might do that so yeah, I fancy Blackburn to edge yeah, that one. That's fair enough. And then your re- most recent opponents, Hull, have got Burnley. Uh, what you, how are you seeing that one? Um, relatively straightforward away win, to be honest. Yeah, um, yeah I think I've gone for 2-0 two, two nil Burnley. Two nil. Just p- yeah. Purely because Hull, they were great on the break until they got the final third. And obviously, you know, they had the chances, but it was a strange game because... It felt like they had lots of the ball for like the you know the first sort of twenty twenty five minutes of the second half, but I think our goalkeeper had one save to me, mm. and that I don't I was even going on target. It was just it was a def, it deflected off our left back, um. So yeah, I just think with Hull, they're a decent team, but I just I can't see them doing I can't see them causing yeah. Burnley too much trouble to be honest. Yeah. I think that's fairly sensible. Um, next game we've got is Millwall versus Plymouth Argyle. I think. That's going to be scrappy. Um, I think, obviously, after Plymouth getting thumped at, um, at Cardiff at the weekend, they're mm. probably going to be, well, I think first and foremost, trying to avoid a repeat of that. <laughs> yeah. uh, was it Mill- Millwall down there struggling as well. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to go for 1-1 one, one on that one. I think they'll just cancel each other out. And it's one of these where, I mean, maybe it's too early to say it's a relegation six-pointer, but... I think it it has the feel of a game where neither team wants to lose it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think did, I didn't say QPR, Paddy, but no, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I get that. I get that. Um, the the next match is a is a relatively decent one, and it's um it's one of your local ish rivals, which is Borough versus Sheffield United. How are you seeing that one? Yeah, it um it was an interesting one. This because I know after I was quite surprised with the middles were scored the weekend when they lost against Bristol City, and I sort of. I saw a few of the comments from the Middlesbrough fans and they, they were just, they were a lot more negative than I was kind of anticipating because I know mm. we beat them earlier in the season. You know, it was, it was 1-0, but it, was, it wasn't it was completely comfortable by any means. And I thought they played good football. They just, like a lot of teams in this league, they just didn't have any end product. But it, it kind of seems like they're past that point now. And I think, you know, they would have been looking at a game like Bristol City thinking that should be three points. So, yeah, yeah I mean, Sheffield United, it, it's, going to be a much harder prospect I think yeah. um, you know Sheffield United are kind of they've clicked into gales you know minus the performance at Leeds where I thought they yeah. were I thought probably worse than bang average really but yeah, yeah I think I fancy Sheffield United to bounce back um, and I've gone for a 2-1 win yeah. to Sheffield United there yeah, that would make it three losses in a row for Borough, but I think you're right. I think you're right. So, and the last one, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, Leeds are back at home and the poor travelling guys from Hertfordshire, the whipping boys uh, from Hertfordshire, Watford, um, are playing against Leeds. So how are you seeing that? <laughs> Just as a FYI, I've gone 4-0. Uh, so, <laughs> so, you don't have to agree, but let's face it, if uh, if we can beat them 3-0, God knows what Leeds are going to do to them. So we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the thing is, again, obviously, we've already played, we've already played both these teams as well. Um, away at Watford, we didn't play it. It wasn't our best performance. Um, you know, we were one-one going at the last five minutes, and then our captain decided to give away a needless penalty, and we got beat two-one. Mm. So that was annoying. It was a case of we overall we weren't really outplayed. We just kind of we gifted them three points, which was annoying. Um, 
Leeds, I mean, from what I've seen, they're the, they're the best team I've seen yeah. so far this season. Um, and yeah, I've gone for a relatively comfortable home win. I've gone for 2-0. I, I think, to be honest, oh, you've after undercooked, losing You've undercooked that part, Paddy. You've undercooked that part. <laughs> <laughs> I just think after no, after losing a derby so comfortably, yeah. I think the last place you want to go is Elland Road, yeah. <laughs> in all honesty. So, yeah, I can't see Watford bouncing back there. I think it'll be a pretty straightforward three yeah. points for Leeds. Yeah, they'll get two goals in the first half and take their foot off the gas. That's what we'll go with, Paddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Paddy, that brings us to the end of uh, of, of the opposition preview. And, and I just want to thank you again for, for joining me. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, like I said, no hopefully we'll, we'll be able to talk again later on in the season uh, when we come up to come up to yours. And um, like I say, I hope that you enjoy watching the game um, tomorrow. And uh, thanks again for joining us. Take care. So there you have it, Hatters. Paddy from the Roker Report podcast predicting a one-all draw uh, with ourselves tomorrow at Kenilworth Road. I actually also predicted a one-all draw. Uh, Sunderland, like we've discussed, are flying there, our top of the league. And we've Rice, we're riding a crest of a wave in the confidence that we'll take from the weekend. It's going to be a tough one. They've got a lot of talented players. We didn't even mention Joe Bellingham, really, um, and, and how strong Sunderland are. They don't seem to be... Uh, suffering from any injuries or any real woes at the moment. So it will be a real proper, proper test for the Hatters. But like I said in the introduction, we have just come off of a massive win at the weekend. Confidence will be absolutely soaring. The atmosphere was electric on Saturday and we need to carry that on forward under the lights on Wednesday. Let's go get them. Let's hope for a win. Let's hope for a great performance. And again, let's back the boys. Come on, you Hatters.